In this section we're going to be talking about dividing polynomials, the remainder, and factor theorems. We're going to talk about using long division, uh, using synthetic division, how to evaluate polynomials using the remainder theorem, and also the factor theorem to solve polynomials. First of all we're going to go back to uh, some of the basics. So we'll see if this will help a little bit. Uh, it's always good to use your background knowledge to try to figure out some answers. Long division. We're going to go back and see if we can't use some long division. Don't worry, our problems are not going to look like this at all, but just a little reference. So first thing, when you're doing long division, you look at your uh, number right here, 7, and you're trying to divide it into 113. So we would figure out, will 7 go into 1? The answer, of course, for that is no. And then you look, will 7 go into 11? And yes, it will. It will go into it one time. And what we do is we actually put the 1 over the 1. And the reason we do that is because our answer is going to be in the have a 1 in the 10 spot. So whatever you're trying to divide into, you need to make sure that you line up your units. We then take this 1 right here and multiply it by the 7, and that will give us 7. After we do that, we're going to subtract. And then when you subtract those, you get a 4. And then next, we're going to bring down the 3. And again, we'll figure out how many times will 7 go into 43. So we'll say 6 times and multiply those two together and you get 42 and then again we'll subtract now there are different ways that you would go from here some will put a decimal here and then keep adding zeros uh, some will uh, go ahead and say that's your remainder uh, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna say this we're gonna take our remainder and put it over the 7 so we'll say it's gonna be plus 1 seventh. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about different parts uh, this right here this right here and then this right here and we're going to name these different parts because they all have specific names uh, what we have this right here is going to be our divisor this is our dividend and then this right here will be our quotient so again important to know some vocabulary when we're talking about this uh, last thing we're going to talk about is some things that we need to remember uh, when you're doing any type of division, you must hold the place value in the dividend and divisor. So right now it's not too, uh, not too much of a problem when you're using actually numbers. When we get into polynomials, it might become an issue. And then long division, we can actually use any time. So it gives us the freedom to be able to use it any time. So it might be good to uh, know what you're doing. Here's an example. So we're trying to take this polynomial x squared plus 10x plus 21 and divide it by x plus 3. So our divisor is going to be x plus 3, so we'll write it over here. And inside our little division sign will be our dividend. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first term of our divisor and figure out what do I have to multiply x by to get the first term of our dividend. Well, x times what will give me x squared? And that answer is x. Now, if you notice, I'm going to line up the terms that have the same degree to help me out a little bit. I'm now going to take this and multiply it by however many terms I have inside my divisor. So x times x will give me x squared. And then x times positive 3 is positive 3x. What I'm going to do next, just like we have been doing, is we're going to subtract. So what that does for me, it changes all the signs of my polynomial. Our goal is for these two terms to cancel when we add them together. As you see, they will. And then when I add these together, I'm going to get 7x. Just like the other time, uh, on the last example with numbers, I'm going to bring that down and figure out what do I have to multiply x by to give me the first term here, 7x. And that answer is a positive 7. So when I multiply 7 times x, I get 7x. When I multiply 7 times 3, I get 21. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract, so both the signs will change, and then we can add these together. That's going to cancel, and this will actually give us a zero. Our remainder is zero. What that means is that our divisor is a factor of our dividend. Evenly. 